Welcome to our new series, Merry Christmas to Me. Let me ask you, what do you look forward to the most at Christmas? Is it the food, the gifts, your family, Christmas movies? There are so many wonderful things to look forward to, right? But I'm going to be honest, this time of year often shows me how me-focused I can be. I catch myself thinking things like, I can't wait for my Christmas break. What should I put on my Christmas list? That's my third slice of fruitcake. All right, who even likes fruitcake? And we've all heard phrases like, Jesus is the reason for the season, or it's about what you give, not what you get. But no matter how many of these reminders we hear, it's still easy to make Christmas all about us. By the time January arrives, we might look back on Christmas Day and determine whether it was good or bad based entirely on what we received or experienced. Were my gifts good? What about the food? Was everyone nice to me? Is it wrong to want to have great Christmas gifts, fun with family, and delicious food? Absolutely not. But when we spend Christmas focusing on what we want, hope for, or expect, there's a good chance we'll be disappointed by the outcome. But what if I told you that this Christmas could be amazing, even if your gifts are terrible, the food all burns, and your family fights the entire time? What if you're not meant to be the main focus of Christmas? What if Christmas isn't about what you and I get or experience? What if there's something much bigger going on? And what if it's really true that it's better to give than to receive? I think the answers to these questions could actually change Christmas for us forever. If Christmas was all about me, my hopes, and my desires, let me tell you what it would look like. Fire in the fireplace, made from scratch cinnamon rolls, coffee and apple cider, and a Christmas story on repeat all day long. In a word, I'd say Christmas should be cozy. We all want comfort, right? Whether it's Christmas Day or just a regular Tuesday, we all want to feel safe, happy, and at peace. Now, comfortable means different things for different people. For you, it might mean that life is fun, or there's nothing to worry about, or everyone in your family is getting along, and that everything is going according to plan. Depending on your personality, feeling comfortable might mean all of those things, or just a few of them. But no matter how you define comfortable, I think we can all agree that we'd love our Christmas holidays to be fun, peaceful, worry-free, and somewhat predictable. But if you know anything about the very first Christmas, the day Jesus was born, you probably wouldn't call it comfortable. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Joseph, her husband, had to get really uncomfortable in order for the first Christmas to happen. We're talking long travel days on a donkey and having a baby in a cave surrounded by smelly animals, while almost everyone you knew thought you were living in sin and imagining angelic visitations. Now you might be familiar with the names Mary and Joseph. If you've heard the Christmas story before, you might even think you know everything there is to know about them. But today I want to challenge you to really imagine what it must have been like to be them and why the first Christmas would have been so uncomfortable. Let's start with Mary. Let's look at Luke chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. But she was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. Then the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary asked the angel, How can this be, since I have not had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her who is called childless. For nothing will be impossible with God. See, I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Can you imagine being in Mary's shoes? She's minding her own business one minute when, out of nowhere, an angel shows up. The angel tells her that she, an unmarried virgin, will somehow have a baby. And that not only is she having a baby, as if that's not already uncomfortable enough, but she's having a baby who would one day save the whole world. I don't know about you, but if I were Mary, I would panic, possibly run away screaming, and probably tell the angel to find someone else. But that's not what Mary did. 
Yes, she was afraid and she had some questions, but Mary was willing to do what God was asking her to do. Mary did what God asked, even though it meant giving up her comfort. Now, she wasn't the only one to give up something to be part of God's plans. Joseph had a role to play in this too. Let's look at Matthew chapter 1. The birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. When Joseph found out about Mary's pregnancy, his immediate reaction wasn't exactly happiness or excitement. For Joseph, this change of plans was deeply uncomfortable. Remember, the world today is very different than the world Mary and Joseph are living in. In their time and culture, if a woman was found to be pregnant before marriage, or if she was assumed to have been cheating on her husband, she would have been seriously punished. Now, I don't know what Joseph thought about Mary's pregnancy at first, but it's clear he was trying to figure out how to keep the peace. He wanted Mary to be comfortable, which is why he decided to divorce her quietly. But let's be honest, he wanted to be comfortable too, which is why he decided to divorce her in the first place. He wasn't getting the message immediately, so God sent another angel to speak directly to Joseph. When the angel arrived, he finally understood. Joseph did what God asked, even though it meant giving up his comfort. Now, I'd love to tell you that after Mary and Joseph made these difficult decisions, everything from that point forward was easy, fun, peaceful, and comfortable. But it wasn't. Mary dealt with the discomfort and pain of pregnancy just like any mother would. They were required to take a long trip to a town called Bethlehem in the last days of Mary's pregnancy with her riding on the back of a donkey. There was nowhere in Bethlehem for them to stay other than a cave where the animals slept. So that's where the Savior of the world was born. After so much discomfort and before they could fully celebrate the miracle of Jesus' birth, King Herod heard a rumor about the birth of a new king. He feared a rebellion. He feared competition. So Herod decided to find and kill not just this one baby, but every baby who might pose a threat. Could Mary and Joseph ever catch a break? Let's look at Matthew 2. After they were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and escaped to Egypt. While you and I dream about cozy Christmases with blankets and crackling fires, we've got to remember just how uncomfortable the first Christmas was. From long travel days on a donkey, to having a baby in a cave surrounded by smelly animals, to having everyone you know think you're living in sin and imagining angelic visitations, to becoming refugees in a foreign country so your baby wouldn't be murdered, Mary and Joseph dealt with a lot. So how'd they do it? Because Mary and Joseph knew the world needed a savior, and they were willing to get uncomfortable in order to see it happen. On the first Christmas, Mary and Joseph gave up their comfort. This Christmas, how could you and I do the same? Mary and Joseph gave up their comfort in order to be part of something bigger than themselves. We're all tempted to see the world through the lens of our own stories, but Mary and Joseph's stories remind us that God is telling a story that is much bigger and better than our individual stories. But what if Mary and Joseph had made different choices? What if Mary had said, I can't do this, choose someone else, God? What if Joseph had said, no thanks, I never volunteered for this? If Mary and Joseph had decided to stick with what was comfortable, Jesus would have still been born, but Mary and Joseph would have missed out on being part of something extraordinary. Because Mary and Joseph chose to give up their comfort, they gained something incredible. They became part of the greatest moment in history, the birth of our Savior. Now, you and I may never be visited by an angel, but we all have the same choice to make. How can I get uncomfortable in order to join what God is doing in the world? I know it's easy to focus on ourselves and our comfort. This isn't only true at Christmas time, it's true all year long. But I hope the stories of Mary and Joseph are the reminder you needed today to choose obedience over comfort. Be kind to a family member you struggle to like. Volunteer to serve someone who's hurting or in need. Spend time with someone you know who could really use a friend right now. Ask for less, give away more. Talk with someone about what the story of Jesus' birth means to you. So what is it for you? 
This Christmas, how can you give up your comfort in order to be part of something bigger than you? God's probably not asking you to do anything as uncomfortable as what Mary and Joseph were asked to do, but do you know what's amazing? This Christmas, you were invited to be a part of the same story Mary and Joseph were a part of. They helped Jesus come into the world. You and I have the chance to continue spreading the good news of Jesus through our words and our actions. On the first Christmas, Mary and Joseph gave up their comfort in order to join God's mission in the world. This Christmas, how can you and I do the same?